Even if you are a short volleyball player, you can block taller players. Uh, and I am sure you want to be good at blocking. Uh, you don't want someone attacking around you or over you. I am sure you want to be a threat on the block uh, so that even taller attackers have to watch where they hit. And that's why I have for you this advice, because even if you are a short player, you can block and in reality you should be able to block. If you are a shorter player so that you can block, uh, I think you only need one thing, uh, just one thing, and that's to jump with your hands over the net. Once you jump and your hands are over the net, uh, you can block. Block a much taller attackers and this video is right for you. Of course, you can use these advice and tips on blocking for short players right away in your upcoming practice or match because they are not uh, too complicated. But first I want to tell you what you shouldn't do on the block, uh, what mistakes and situation to avoid if you are a shorter player. Remember these three things. Spreading your arms on the block is one of the things uh, I don't recommend. Sure, if you look on YouTube, uh, you will find videos where even shorter players have blocked a hitter with one hand. Yes, that's possible, but how often? Uh, these are absolutely rare situations. Maybe once in 50 attempts uh, you will achieve it. If you are a shorter player, you usually have a disadvantage against the attacking player. He hits the ball higher than you jump. And if you spread your arms when blocking, you give him more room to make the point. Because uh, blocking uh, attacks that come from above on your hands uh, with only one hand is very difficult. The ball can bounce from your hands to virtually anywhere because it only hits a small area on your hand. Also, in the vast majority of cases, this attack will end uh, with a point for the attacker or your mistake on the block. Also, by spreading your hands out uh, on the block, uh, whether it's a single block or a double block, you make the job of the defense in the field more difficult. The player standing in defense uh, now doesn't know if he should stand next to your block or if he should stand behind you and wait for the incoming attack through your hands. Therefore, in the vast majority of cases, I don't recommend uh, that you spread your hands uh, on the block. The second mistake or rather situation that you should avoid in my opinion is trying to help uh, middle blockers with quick attacks or helping uh, with the pipe attack. Because you are a short player, the opponent and the setter will want to exploit attacks uh, through you as a weakness on the block. So expect more sets to fly where you are blocking. Uh, and that's uh, why you should focus on your attacker who can attack against you. The other factor that militates against having most small players helping out in the middle of the net is time. Imagine that in order to help you have to make a step or two and jump. Because you are shorter, your jump has to be high or you won't get over the net and uh, all of this take time. So you have to read the game well and actually decide to do this help before the taller players because it will take you longer time. Well, then there is a big risk that you will make a mistake, misjudge the situation and not be able to block in the time against your attacker or even uh, be late uh, with your help in the middle. That's why I advise you to concentrate on your attacker first and don't help uh, with the blocking other players. The third mistake uh, that not only short players make is flying on the block. Sometimes this is related to the previous situation uh, where you are trying to help out uh, at the middle of the net, but the setter chooses a quick set to zone 4 or 2. You have to react to that, uh, you are under time pressure again to get to the block. Uh, so you bounce and try to fly to the block. Uh, but again, that's a big help for the offensive player. First of all, you are a shorter player, so if you jump into the distance sideways, you are not going to jump as high as you would uh, on the vertical jump. And secondly, the flying block is a great aid uh, for the attacker. So those were three mistakes you should avoid if you want to block as well as a short player. And now let's uh, look at the advice on how you should actually block. Like I said, anyone who jumps with hands over the net is capable to block and block the attacks. So don't think about being a short player that others are taller, jump higher and block better. There will always be someone who is uh, better at blocking, uh, just like there will always be someone uh, who is better at uh, serving or passing. Don't think about others, uh, but focus on your actions on the block and trust yourself. Yes, trust yourself. Sometimes your one block at the end of the set uh, can decide the match, uh, so be patient and get it into your head that anyone can block. You should know it. Uh, to block it is important to get your hands over the net, always as high as possible, but especially with your hands on the other side of the net. When I look at some uh, coaches who advise their smaller players to go forward to the antenna, to the spot where they will block, then jump from this position, I couldn't agree more. Yes, you certainly won't fly on the block in this case, but the, again, you won't jump high out of your spot. Uh, with all jumps in volleyball, it helps us uh, to have at least one step. If you don't believe me, try attacking from spot without single step after 
a jump and uh, you will see the difference. That's why you should also jump on the block after taking one step. The shuffle is an option, but uh, you won't jump very high with this technique. I definitely recommend you to jump on the block uh, with a swing block technique. Then you will jump uh, the highest. Uh, you will be able to put your hands on the other side of the net uh, and you will increase uh, your chances of success on the block. Your chances of making a point on the block are not the same as the hitter has with his attack. If you are a short player and a tall player is attacking against you, he has a huge advantage. Uh, he will attack higher than the, where you can reach. He is attacking in the jump with one hand. You are jumping on the block with two hands. Uh, and the one-handed jump reach is always higher than the two-handed jump reach. So wait with your block. Uh, don't jump forward. Uh, don't jump at the same time as the attacker. Be patient. Wait with your block. Uh, don't show him ahead. Uh, uh, where your block is. Rather, at the last moment, set your block. You also need to play with certain tactics on the block and be excellent observer. What do I mean? You need to read the movement of the attacker well, the movement of his hand, think about where he can hit, know what his uh, preferred direction of attack is, uh, how he deals with quick sets, uh, where he hits high sets, or what he does if he has a set uh, 2 meters from the net. And you, because you are at a physical disadvantage, uh, you need to be stronger in these things and make a good tactical assessment of every situation. And when you are on the block, uh, don't think uh, about the fact uh, that your goal is only a direct point from the block, that you have to block at all costs, uh, that you are only going to play well on the block if you have three blocks per game. Yes, it's great to have three points on the block, uh, but that alone doesn't say you are a good blocker. In my eyes, a good blocker doesn't get uh, used on attack, uh, doesn't spread his arm out uh, regularly on the block. If a hard attack hits his block, it's not the end of the play and the ball is far away out of the court. Also touching the attack and slowing down the ball on the block is a big plus. Or a well covered zone by your block and subsequent uh, successful defense in the field is a positive action. Or forcing the attacker to make a mistake and attack into the out of the court when you don't show your hands is good. I consider all of these things as a good work on the block. So don't just think about direct points on the block, uh, but become a complex player on the block. Well, in order for your block to not be used as a tool by attackers, you need to have a solid wrists and fingers. Because you can expect that most of the hits uh, to your block uh, will be directed from the top of your hands or fingers. Sometimes the hitter will also attack over you. This is a fact uh, you must take into the account and not let it uh, throw you off. It happens to every player. As I said, uh, you are a shorter player, you have to be patient and wait for your opportunity, then maybe at the end of the set you can have positive touch on the block uh, with an attacking player who has hit twice over you in the meantime. But because you have uh, strong hands and fingers on the block, uh, that one touch on the block was defended by the defense behind you and your team won that uh, set because of that block touch and successful transition. So again, don't be afraid of the block uh, even if you are a short player. Trust that sometimes even one block or block touch uh, can help a team extremely. Be patient and wait for your chance. Avoid the mistakes I mentioned and remember the blocking advice I described. I see you in the next video. Bye.